Hey guys, Rafferty Refine here. Everything you need to refine your skills as a chalk painting artist. So today we're going to be covering the client side of things. So refining your skills as a chalk painter isn't always on the painting side of things. Sometimes along your career, you're going to come across commission pieces, meaning somebody's going to ask you um, to do one of their pieces. If it's your first time taking on a commission piece like that, or if you're a bit new in that area, I've made this video to help you with that. So here are my five top tips for client consults. Let's go. Number one is be confident. To be honest, when you're caught up in the moment and you know, you're gonna come across something that you might not know the answer to, you might get caught off guard with something and start to lose track of your knowledge a little bit on your assessment of your pieces. What you need to do is take a deep breath and remain confident in your trade. Just because you don't know the answer to something, it doesn't mean that you need to lack that confidence. So just remember going in to your client consultations that you know your trade, you know, you know what you're doing, and it's okay if you don't know everything and you can figure it out as you go. Um, clients can sense when you lose your confidence and um, it can cost you a commission piece. Uh, yeah, it has for me. I felt the need to put it at number one just because it seems so simple, but it is that critical. Go in and be confident. You got it. Number two. Okay, so what I want you to do is learn to inspect your pieces. Also, if it's an online consultation, you need to have them send pictures and dimensions to you. So what you need to be looking for is the type of wood, and if it's real wood, and the size. And what exactly do they want done? Will they be wanting different hardware? This is important. I'll be going over this more in detail later on, so stick around. So knowing the size of your piece and the type of wood, you can start to gain that structure for the time and the products that you'll be using, which is what you want. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any videos to refine your skills as a chalk painting artist. Let's move on to the next tip. So as we're starting to get an understanding of the time and products, we're going to be moving into number three, which is zoning in on specifics. So this is what's gonna help us narrow in on our costs. So for instance, it's a very important detail if you are refurbishing anything with drawers, if your client wants those uh, changed because this is gonna determine mudding and redrilling holes and that takes time. Also, you're going to have to discuss with your client who's going to cover the cost of the hardware. That can be a hang up, um, either you know, if you have to place an order for something online or if you wanna include it in the total cost on your invoice. So zoning in on those key specifics can really help you determine time spent on your piece. So go over in detail what your client wants done and how much you have to manipulate the piece for that to be done and then that way you can get your bearings for your project. Number four, hourly rate. So in our profession, we not only have to cover our product costs, but we get to pick our own hourly rate. Uh, sounds like fun, but we wanna be fair and we wanna be fair to ourselves as well. So I understand that every area is different as far as what a respectable hourly rate will be. As for where I live, it's anywhere between $25 to $50 an hour. And what I do is I go off of my experience level and how difficult, like the difficulty level of the piece. Let's like say, I'll give you a quick example. Um, so I'll factor in my experience rate and then I'll go in and I'll be like, okay, is it blending or is it just a straight shot one color? And then I'll, I'll figure out where I wanna really drop that pin and then I'll add that to my product costs and I'll come up with that kind of total. So that kind of gives you an idea. So just uh, take some time and think about those rates so you are all set to go when you get those inquiries. Lastly, number five is presentation. So this kind of runs in with number one, but a little more in depth. So think about it for a minute. Presentation is key. You're meeting your client for the first time and also you're representing your business, especially because word of mouth is like the strongest form of networking in the community. You're really going to want to zone in on some 
good presentation skills. Having that confidence, having a good game plan when you go in. This most likely will not be your first conversation with your client when you're going to be meeting with them and going over the piece in person. So, you know, just be prepared. Yeah. Just like some key points and details from your conversation. Um, what I find handy is a book like a so. Just, you know, it looks like well put together. You can take some notes so you don't have to rely on your memory. <laughs> if you're like me, I think that I'm gonna remember everything and then I get back into my car or when I get home and I'm like, oh, what was that? I totally forgot and it's just, it doesn't really look good when you're like, oh, sorry, um, what was that that we talked about? Did you want this or that? You know, that kind of thing. Sometimes before um, the consults, I'll go over and just take some color swatches of um, things that we've talked about so they can actually see them in person. They can determine what colors that they want from there, you know, process of elimination, things like that. So stuff like that, that is presentation. And it's little things like that that really go a long way. And if you're nervous, having a book is so good to hang on to. You, know, you give all that nervous energy to your book and um, you know, statistics do show that holding on to something you know, relieves that nervous energy and uh, what better way than a nice, a chic notebook, right? The bottom line is that you know, it's good to uh, write things down in, it's good for presentation and you know, um, keeps you on track and the client will take you seriously. They're, you're gonna show up, you're gonna be confident, you're gonna know what to ask, you're gonna know what to bid and you're gonna know what to write down. You can rest assured and really uh, be confident in asking for a higher price. So I hope I helped you guys with some insight on handling those client consults. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on refining your skills as a chalk painting artist. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. So come visit me and say hi. I'd love to hear from you. Also in the comments down below, um, if you have any other specific questions, I don't mind answering them and um, let me know how your client consults go. Until then, it was a pleasure doing this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.